The year is more than halfway over, so let's talk about how I'm doing on my reading goals so far. Hello, beautiful people of the internet. How are you doing today? My name is Jackie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be having a little mid-year reading goals check-in. So at the beginning of every calendar year, I make a video on my YouTube channel talking about some of my reading related goals for the year. Now these are not intended to be high pressure because obviously reading should be fun, but they are things that I want to think about throughout the year. And in today's video, we're going to talk about what my goals for this year were and how am I doing now that the year is more than halfway over. First, let's talk about the goal for my Goodreads reading challenge. I set my goal at 75 books. I believe last year I read 77 or 78. So 75 is actually lower than what I read last year. But like I said, I didn't want to put too much pressure on myself because 80 books is a lot. So I wanted to set a lower number that was hopefully easier to achieve. And then I could also take some time to maybe read some longer books instead of just reading a lot of really quick reads to get to a higher number. So how am I doing on that goal? Well, currently I've read 38 books as of when I'm filming this video, and I am one book behind schedule. The trip that I took to Portugal really set me back. I was on track, I think pretty much all year long, but then I went on vacation where I obviously wasn't reading as much, and I was, I think, two or three books behind after that trip. So I am improving. Now I'm only one behind, which is a lot easier to make up than two or three, but I am still technically behind. Of course, it's not the end of the world. If I only read 74, that's still a lot more than the average American, but it would be nice to hit 75. I like 75. It's a nice number, you know, and I think it's realistic, but also still feels like an achievement. Now, the next two goals that I mentioned in my 2024 reading goals video, I don't think I'm doing super well on those so far. So those goals were to read big slash intimidating books and also to read more classics. I said I was hoping to read at least six classics this year. How am I doing on these? Not well, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't know how many big books that I've read, and I did read The Count of Monte Cristo, which is a classic and is big. That book was the biggest book on my TBR. So pat on the back to me for finally reading that. I really had wanted to read it for a long time and I really enjoyed it. But other than that, I haven't really read any big books or any classics. I did read We Have Always Lived in the Castle, which I guess is a modern classic, but not really what I had in mind when I created this prompt. I think the issue is that even though I really like reading classics, even though there are some long books that I do really want to read, it is sometimes hard to find the motivation to pick up one of those books because they are serious undertakings. They do require a lot of time. And if you're reading a classic, you do want to think about it and devote a lot of time to understanding the text, right? So sometimes it's hard to motivate myself to pick up a classic when I could instead just read a bunch of mysteries and thrillers and probably read three books in the same amount of time. I mean, I have a copy of Shakespeare's sonnets that I bought when I studied abroad and we went to Stratford-upon-Avon. Haven't read that yet. 
I have a Midsummer Night's Dream. Haven't read that yet. I have several Penguin Cloth Bound classics that I haven't read. Valette by Charlotte Bronte, Middlemarch by George Eliot, Far From the Madding Crowd. Hell, I have a copy of Tess of the D'Urbervilles that I won playing Victorian novels trivia in college. Haven't read that yet either. And I do really want to read these books, but it's just hard to say, okay, this month is gonna be the month that I read Shakespeare. This month is gonna be the month that I read Middlemarch. Because they do require more thought and in some cases are very long. I think it was easier when I was in school and I was forced, for lack of a better term, to read these classics. And there was also the added element of having a group to discuss them with, which I think made it more motivating because I had to read the books by a certain time. And I knew that I was going to have people to talk about the book with, whereas now I don't have that anymore. To be completely honest, I think my Scrabble TBR game is also partially to blame. So this is the game that I play every month on my channel to pick out the books that I'm going to read. And when I designed this game, I wanted to give myself a lot of freedom in picking the books because I didn't want to force myself to read books that I wasn't in the mood for. I wanted to actually be able to complete my TBR most of the time, right? But the problem is I have so much freedom in determining the prompts that again, there's no way to force myself to read these books that I do legitimately want to read, but I'm also scared of, right? Because I get to decide what the prompts are. Am I going to give myself a big book as a prompt? No. <laughs> no, I don't. And so I do think that is a problem with my TBR game because other people who play TBR games, they have classic as a prompt. They have big book as a prompt. They can force themselves to pick up these books that they ought to be reading, but just haven't made time for yet. And my game doesn't have that. So I think that's partially holding me back from this goal as well. I do like playing this game. I know there are a lot of people who look forward to it every month, but I feel like I need some way <laughs> to get myself to read these intimidating books. And if any of you out there have a suggestion for how I can motivate myself to read these, how I could incorporate them into the game, let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts because I really need to make time for these books. I do legitimately want to read them. It's just, it's easier to read shorter books. It's easier to read mysteries and thrillers that I can fly through. So I'm not really adding these to my TBR because I'm, I'm scared of them. Another one of my goals was to continue using NetGalley and reviewing books on NetGalley. So most of you probably know, but in case you don't, NetGalley is a site where book reviewers can sign up to get advanced copies of books before their release dates. They will get an electronic copy of the book for free and in return they are supposed to review the book on their platform to you know, help the publisher and get some buzz going for the books before they are released. So far this year, I have read and reviewed three books on NetGalley. They were Murder by Lamplight by Patrice McDonough, which is a Victorian era historical fiction mystery. I described it in my video as if you took the romantic storyline from Miss Scarlet and the Duke with the tone of Ripper Street, combined them into one book, that would be this book. I also read The Rumor Game by Thomas Mullen on NetGalley, and this is a World War II era thriller. And I also read Disturbing the Dead, the latest A Rip Through Time novel by Kelly Armstrong. This is part of a series that follows a modern day police detective who accidentally transports back in time to Victorian era Edinburgh, where she ends up helping 
solve crimes in Victorian era Scotland. This was the third book in the series and the second that I had the opportunity to review on NetGalley. So I did enjoy reading all of these books and I will link in the card the videos where I give my more in-depth thoughts on them. I would like to read some more NetGalley books in the latter half of the year. Though, to be honest with you, the last few times that I looked, I didn't see anything that was really grabbing my interest because obviously if I'm going to request a book on NetGalley, I want it to be something that I genuinely think I'm really, really going to like and that my subscribers are going to be interested in. So I'm not requesting things just for the sake of it. I'm requesting things that I think really sound like they're up my alley. Another thing that I put in my goals video was my read it or delete it TBR challenge. I will link this video in the card also. This is a video that I filmed at the beginning of the year where I created a list of I think 12 titles. They were all books that I put on my TBR shelf on Goodreads a long time ago. Some of them as far back as 2018 when I first started on booktube. And so the premise of this challenge is simple. In the year 2024, I have to read the books on this list. And if I don't read them, I'm deleting them from my TBR. Because honestly, if you've had a book on your TBR for six years, and you haven't read it yet, at a certain point, I think you have to be honest with yourself and recognize that you're just not going to read them, right? I'm adding more and more books to my TBR every year, and I want to keep it at a realistic number and be honest with myself about what I actually want to read and what I don't. Because obviously my tastes have changed and some books that I added to my TBR when I first joined booktube are just not the type of thing that interest me at this point in my life. So if I haven't found the motivation to read them yet, like it's do or die time. So let me scroll through my notes app to find the list. Okay, I actually put 24 books on the list. I thought it was 12, one for each month, but no, I did 24, two per month. And obviously, um, I don't think I'm going to end up reading all 24 of these books, but that's okay. The goal for this was not necessarily to read all 24, but it was to force myself to read them, right? To recognize, all right, <laughs> if this book has been on your TBR for five or six years, this is your chance to read it. And if you're not taking advantage of the chance, Jackie, then let's be honest, let's delete them from the TBR. So the books on this list that I have read so far were oof, The Last Mrs. Parrish by Liv Constantine, which I really hated. Um, this is a very hyped thriller, a lot of people's favorite thriller. And I honestly don't understand why anyone liked this book. I thought it was absolutely awful, but I read it. Um, I read Lies She Told by Kate Hollihan, which I gave a three star. I read The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. And I honestly don't remember what I rated this, but I think I gave it like a three or a four. I DNF'd The Clockmaker's Daughter by Kate Morton. And currently I have The Alice Network by Kate Quinn checked out from the library. I'm planning to read that this month. So those are the books that I've checked off the list so far. And the final thing that I mentioned in my reading goals video is that I wanted to prioritize reading books that I already owned and avoid buying too many. I feel like I'm doing okay with this so far. I've read 38 books so far this year, like I said, and 10 of those 38 were books that were on my physical shelf, which I think is pretty good. I do go to the library a lot, <laughs> so most of the books that I read do come from the library, but I also don't want to forget about these books that I bought, and I think this is going okay so far. 
I'm thinking about making some sort of video to go through my physical TBR, possibly a try a chapter tag video where it's a multi-part series and each video I'm going through my physical TBR seeing what piques my interest because again some of these books I've had for a while some of them just aren't the kinds of things that I'm interested in anymore and some of them I think I've kind of just had them for so long that I've not forgot about them necessarily but I just haven't thought to add them to a TBR, if you know what I mean. Because usually when I'm creating my TBR, I'm thinking about things that I added recently, things that I saw a positive review about recently, things that I've been getting a lot of hype, and maybe not necessarily that book that I bought three years ago that I was really excited for at the time, but now the hype has died down a little bit. And while I'm not sure exactly how many books I've bought so far this year, I think it has been a reasonable number. I'm probably going to film a book haul soon and probably order some more books because I still have more than $50 to spend in Barnes & Noble gift cards. So I probably will be buying a few more things in the near future. But I think I am being pretty responsible. You know, I'm buying things with gift cards. I'm not spending a huge amount of my own money on them. And I'm also trying to be smarter with my purchases. Like for instance, if there's a book that I want to read and the library has it, then I'm going to get it from the library and not buy my own copy. I'm also trying to think about, are the books that I'm buying books that I potentially might want to reread someday? For instance, most thrillers I'm probably not going to reread because the appeal of thrillers is finding out the resolution. And once you know who did it, you're maybe probably not going to read it again unless it was an all-time favorite. So a thriller book makes more sense to get that from the library. But if it's a classic, maybe 20 years from now, I'm going to want to read that again. If it's by one of my favorite authors, might want to read that again. And so I'm just trying to be more strategic with my purchases. So that is it for my mid-year reading goals check-in. I think I'm doing okay, but there definitely are some goals that I should prioritize a little more. If you're still here watching this video, let me know in the comments what were some of your reading goals for this year and how are you doing? Are you accomplishing your goals? Are there some things that you need to focus on in the latter half of the year? Do let me know. And if you're still here watching and you want to show your support, but you don't know what to comment, why don't you leave a book stack emoji in the comment section down below? If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. My social media links are in the description if you would like to connect with me on those other platforms. I think that about covers it today. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have an exceptional rest of your day. Bye, and I'll see you next time.